right? So, so I want you to get that. He's trying to take our knowing and give us a fresh turn, a fresh revelation. And what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about communion. We're going to be talking about communion. But I believe uh, you're going to hear about it tonight in this next 20 minutes in a way that you've never heard it before. All right? So if you trust the Lord, say, I'm ready to go. Ready to go. I see you, my friend. Let's jump into the word. Amen. Exodus chapter 12, verse 21 through 23. I'm going to blitz through this pretty quickly so we can get to the rest of the night. So let me help you. Let me explain to you. Some of you are probably wondering, what is tonight going to be like from this point? I've never been to one of these services before. I'm going to tell you. Let me take all the spookiness and all the surprise out. What's going to happen is we're going to get this revelation. We're going to get this word in us. After we get this in us, I'm telling you around about minute 10, something's going to start stirring on your insides. All right. Around about minute 20, when we get in, something's going to start clicking and you're going to start seeing something new. Then we're going to jump in communion. And this will be a time that you've had communion in a different way than you've ever taken it before. Upon that, we're going to pray over these prayer requests. We're going to pray for all the needs that are in the house. We're going to make some prophetic declarations and some decrees. And we're just going to call out in the spirit what is in the atmosphere, what God wants to arrest, what he wants to change, what he wants to heal, what he wants to break. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen like a glass shattering, like a hammer hitting a window. It's going to happen. And there are going to be manifestations that pop up all over the room. It may be you. It may be the person sitting next to you. We're going to hear some testimonies on what has happened. And then we're going to go in into a time of prayer, prophecy, and manifestation. And every need in the house will be met. Amen. Now, how does that sound? That, that at least give you some clarity before you put your seatbelt on, right? Okay, all right. Here we go, let's jump in. Exodus chapter 12, verse 21 through 23. You got two different portions of scriptures that I'm gonna read to you. We're gonna start Old Testament, then jump to the new, all right? Very familiar portion of scripture because this deals with uh, how Passover began in the Old Testament. It says, then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin and put some of the blood on the top of both sides of the door frame. Then it says, none of you shall go out of the door of your house until the morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top of the sides of the door frame and will pass over the doorway and he will not permit the destroyer. Everybody say the destroyer. He will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. It's very important you understand that portion right there. He will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. New Testament scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 31. We're going to read a little bit, but y'all know this scripture. It's the uh, scripture of communion. He says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthily manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and against the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many, are, many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. God bless this time. Speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. In this main text we just read, you see Paul, and you hear Paul talking through the Lord's Supper. By the way, before I get going, can you give it up for the praise team and for my wonderful wife for leading us tonight? Amen. They're incredible. 
<laughs> they're going to be back in a little bit because it's a work night for all of us. So they'll be back in a little bit to put a little bit more work in. Here we go. Um, there we go. Do not disturb. Thank you. In the main text, you hear Paul talking through the scripture. You hear him talking through the Lord's Supper and communion. And he said uh, in King James translation, it talks about the body that is broken for you. The body that is broken for you. This cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. And whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. So I got two major points. Only two. Somebody say only two. Only two. Not four. Not three with a surprise three at the end. Only two. Only two that I'm going to give you. That was an inside joke with me and my friend. Y'all give it up for Pastor Aaron Anderson, by the way. Can y'all give it up for him? He's right there. Wave your hand, sir, for everybody to see you. Yeah. You were praying. I didn't remember, so I didn't bring you on the stage. But we ain't done with the night yet. But this man is an angel to all of us. He's an amazing pastor, but he's even more of an incredible friend. When we went out on journey, and his wife, Pastor Shante, on... Um, give it up for her as well. When we went in the journey of planning this church, he refused to let us do anything different but come here. And he has met all of our needs, made sure we had everything that we needed to start in a great way. Y'all not in a hotel room tonight. Y'all not in an elementary school lunch cafeteria. with Y'all in a church with air condition, with AV, with sound, with good seats, with... I'm thankful. Y'all might not be thankful, but I'm thankful because many pastors didn't start off the way that we are today. And for that, I am truly grateful. Amen. Amen. All right. Everybody say this. Point number one, remember the Lord. Lord. Say it one more time. Remember Remember the Lord. All right. Come get me in about 10 minutes. We'll see how this goes. Remember the Lord. So in the King James, this scripture talks about, this scripture comes out and it literally says body which is broken for you. Body which is broken for you. Everybody say broken. Broken. But let me challenge you within the onset of this lesson. His body was never broken. So you got to understand translation and you got to understand context. Paul was talking about a story in a moment where he was not in the room. Understand. Jesus' body was never broken. He was never broken. This scripture that backs this up, Exodus chapter 12, verse 46 says, it must be eaten inside of the house. Going back to our first text, talking about when you do the feast of the Passover. It said that the animal must be eaten inside of the house, take none of the meat outside of the house, and do not break any of the bones. Do not break any of the bones. John chapter 9, 19, 32 through 34 talks about the crucifixion and says the, the soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus in the side watch this with a spear bringing a sudden flow of blood and water we're gonna get deep real quick tonight real fast in a hurry are you ready they pierced his side with blood and water here's the understanding Jesus came to the earth never intending to be broken his assignment was not to be broken his assignment was to be poured out that's when although it was their custom to break legs when they came to Jesus they couldn't break his legs they had to pierce his side notice that they did not pierce the thief on the left and all the thief on the right they broke their legs they broke their body but in Jesus they had to give him access to pour out because now the scripture comes and says blood and water flowed out when they pierced him in his side his fulfillment of why he came and why he died on the cross happened because the blood which was the last atonement was poured out and the water which was the Holy Spirit which was to come was poured out at the same time Jesus body was never meant to be broken he was meant to be poured out he was meant to be poured out and the Bible says that these things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled not one of his bones would be broken but then it says this watch this but they will look upon the one that has been pierced they would look upon the one that has been pierced so the question would come to you why wouldn't he be broken why was he not 
broken. Well, watch this. His body, his bones could not be broken because then the promise of eternity, the promise of life everlasting, the promise of eternal victory would now be a lie. If Jesus' bones are broken, it means eternal life would be broken, victory would be broken, and salvation would be broken. Watch this. Eternal victory is the principle that once you are saved, there is nothing that can break you. I didn't say anything wouldn't hit you. I didn't say nothing would touch you. I didn't say things wouldn't happen in your life. I didn't say problems would arise, but I am telling you, they don't have the authority to break you. Look at somebody and say, it can't break you. Nothing can take your life. Nothing can take, it even goes so far to say to be absent from the body is to be present in the Lord because that's how big the promise is that your life cannot be broken somebody shout it again I cannot be broken you cannot be look at somebody else and tell them I know it hurts but you can't be broken I know you thought it was going to take you out but you can't be broken I know you thought it was going to bend you over backwards and forwards but you can't be broken I know you thought this sickness was going to take you out but you cannot be broken the anxiety the depression it might feel like a monster but you cannot be broken I need you to encourage somebody on your road if the person beside you ain't talking to you look past him at somebody else that will and tell him you can't be broken yeah is this good so far watch this his body could not be broken because it was the symbolic gesture of faith and strength his body could not be broken because it represents his strength and his wholeness in our eternity I got some scripture to back that up for you Psalms 34 17 through 20 says the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them he delivers them from all their troubles the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit <clears throat> the righteous person may have many troubles but the Lord delivers him from them all right he protects well, y'all ain't ready he protects all his what talk to me y'all ain't say it with enough power he protects all his what I'm trying to prophesy to you tonight in the onset and get your faith up to realize that the situation you even walked in here with right now the reason why you're in this service at Passover night is because God is trying to show you you cannot be broken he protects his bones and not one of them will be broken so Jesus is on the cross and his blood is shed. His blood is poured out. Jesus is in the garden now and Jesus took upon and he felt the weight of the sins of the world as he was praying to the Father. You know that, Lord, let this cup pass from me, but Lord, let your will be done. And he cried tears of blood and sweated blood, all this stuff. He went through this whole ordeal and this had to be done for him to fulfill the mission this had to be done for him to fulfill the mission because there had to be a final atonement there had to be blood that was shed in order to cover blood in order to cover blood in order to cover so Jesus took on sin in order to be identified by the wrath of God I'll say that again Jesus took on sin for the sole purpose to be identified by the wrath of God because the wrath of God needed to be unleashed on something that could hold it so it did not get unleashed on you so Jesus put on sin I'm going somewhere tonight real quick he put on sin so that he can be identified by the wrath of God but watch this even though he put on sin he did not experience it on his inside he experienced the weight. He experienced the stress of it. He experienced the strain of it. But the reason why his blood could be the final blood of atonement because sin did not originate from his insides. It was placed on him. It never came from within him. So because it never came from within him, his blood was perfect. His blood was untouched. His blood was the only blood that would be accepted. So if you can see it, he's carrying something that did not originate from the inside so he can get you across to where you're supposed to be look at somebody and say this is why you can't be broken yeah yeah this is why you cannot be broken so he now becomes the Passover lamb of the Old Testament and now he is the final in the New Testament he connects the dots 
So now we're in Corinthians and Paul's talking. And he says, whoever eats of the bread or drinks of the cup unworthily matter will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. This is why many are weak among you and sick and why many of you have fallen asleep. Now, this is where it's going to get gritty. Because I know for me, I grew up hearing that all wrong. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because a lot of y'all sat in communion in little churches and said, well, I know when I was a little boy, I said, well, I got in trouble at school on Friday. I can't take communion. It's quiet. I was cussing and fussing. I was cutting up. I can't take communion because it says I'm unworthy if I've been doing wrong. And if I take communion, I might get sick. And the preacher come with that dusty black robe and say, and that's why many of you sleep and you're dead, because it wasn't right. Yeah. And they try to threaten you to the altar. Y'all yeah. oh, no, know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Every fourth Sunday was guilt trip Sunday. <laughs> it was like you do it for you. I'd be sitting on the organ like, Lord, don't look at me. You looked at me. Okay, whatever. Just get on with it so we can go eat some chicken. Okay. All right. Every fourth Sunday. Guilt trip. Angelica, you know what I'm talking about. Every fourth Sunday, guilt trip Sunday. That's what they, they do. But, but, but I'm going to break this down for you in just a few minutes of what this really meant. Are you ready? No, no, no. Are you ready? Because when you understand what I'm getting ready to give to you, what the Lord gave me to give to you, this is the meat of it right here. When you get this, it's going to open up everything else in your life. Believing in healing will not be an issue for you after this. Believing in deliverance will not be an issue with you after this. Believing for breakthrough will not be an issue for you after this. Are you ready? I need to hear you shout, I'm ready. Yeah, this ain't Sunday morning. This is a different type of night. So we need full engagement. We need everybody on the bus. Shout it one more time. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, here we are. We're already in my second point. I told you I only had two. Here it is. Am I a covenant keeper? Am I a covenant keeper? We just talked about the covenant of Passover from the Old Testament. Now we're in the new talking about communion. And the question on the table is, am I a covenant keeper? keeper watch this you can only keep a covenant when you believe in it and to keep a covenant you must first agree to keep the terms and conditions also there's three elements of covenant that you have to understand and keep number one is the sign number two is the promise and number three is the meal in every covenant in the bible there was a sign there was a promise and then there was followed up with a meal everybody say the sign the promise and the, meal. and the meal. Let's dig a little deeper. You ready? Here we go. What I believe, what puts me in an unworthy position? What I believe. What I believe. Like the scripture says, where I'm taking communion unworthily. It's when I live my life not believing what communion really represents. I say this blood and this bread, I say the bread represents his body, which was marred and jacked up and punished for me, for my healing, for my deliverance. That's why I say the bread is for. But why don't I push for? Why don't I ask for? Why don't I look for? Why don't I expect and receive healing which is a part of the blessing of that part of the covenant. Come on now. Yeah. Talk about it. So what happens is I come to the table, bust it up. I take the bread with all expectations of walking back to my seat, bust it up. Come on now. This is what it means to take it unworthily. Because you have to believe what the covenant is for the covenant to be active. A covenant cannot be active in your life if you do not have agreement with the terms. Yeah. 
the terms of the bread is if you partake of the bread you take on healing so if you partake of the bread and go back and put a thermometer in your mouth and test yourself for COVID you have not agreed to the terms of the covenant is this helping anybody right here so, so I say the cup represents the blood but yet Romario I have an issue for giving others and I have a bigger issue for giving myself but I partake of this cup. Dewan, I partake of this. Leon, I take the cup. But I got forgiveness issues. I live my life every day wrestling with bondage. I live my life accepting and making space for strongholds and making excuses for oppressions that are in areas of my life. But every first Sunday, every fourth Sunday, I'm at the table drinking, but ain't nothing happening because I don't have a covenant. The scripture says every person should examine themselves. That backs down to one word, reflect. Everybody say reflect. reflect. It's one word, reflect. The questions that I would ask myself is how did I get here? At one place did it become hard for me to believe? I'm looking at all these prayer requests and I'm seeing places and opportunities to believe opportunities to stretch faith opportunities to trust God again and I'm asking myself what happened where was the place where I got off the roller coaster and off the ride and my belief started having issues was it was it a disappointment I'm asking you today was it a moment in your life where you got confused with what was going on? Was it a moment where you had a bad breakdown? Was it a moment when you had just a bad time and a bad season in your life? The reality for us is many of us in the room tonight are dealing with sickness, we're dealing with ailments, we're dealing with mental issues, we're dealing with strongholds, we're dealing with addictions, we're dealing with habits, we're dealing with bad thoughts, bad choices, bad decisions, unforgiveness, and the list goes on and on not because we're not good people we are good people but because we are not living out the promise that Passover and communion table gives us so watch this so what manifests in our lives is the opposite of what's on the table and many of us have fallen asleep because we gotten trained by life that this is how it was intended for us to live, not realizing we have fallen asleep on the promises of God. We have fallen asleep on the covenant. We have fallen asleep on the power of communion. So the Old Testament says they were instructed to put the blood across the top and on the sides. But in the New Testament, we're not told to put the blood on any doorpost in the New Testament we're not told to go to Lowe's and buy a new door to put some blood across but in the New Testament we are told to drink it in the New Testament we are instructed to ingest it we are told to take this one on the inside and on our insides the new covenant becomes our new belief system and our new way of life so how did we get here and where do we go from here back to the three things you need for covenant you need a sign right you need a promise somebody was listening and you need a what and you need a meal so in the new testament the meal was when jesus told the disciples follow this guy he's going to take you to a house and go up in that room and he's going to take you to a room that's fully furnished and there set up the feast of the passover Psh. they had no idea that when they got into space in the room that this was going to be the time that Jesus sat down and broke the new covenant with them they had no idea that this was going to be the last dinner they had no idea that this was going to be the last fellowship but they also had no idea that this was the last time they would have to suffer 
They had no idea that this is the last time they had to live their life subjected to the tricks and the attacks of the enemy on their body, on their mind, in their emotions, in their life, in their thoughts, in their reality. They had no idea that everything was about to change. They had no idea that this meal was going to shift the life as we knew it. It was going to shift time. It was going to shift eternity. They didn't know. They sat down. and Jesus took bread. And he broke it. <laughs> and he said take eat this is my body then he took the cup and he said take drink this is my blood Whew. that has been shed for you and as often as you do this you remember my sovereignty you remember my power you remember my promise you remember my ability you remember my faithfulness you remember my goodness you remember that I'm a promise keeping God you remember that I'm a healing God you remember that I'm a delivering God and as you're drinking it you're drinking my deliverance you're drinking my strength you're drinking my power you're ingesting my will you're ingesting my purpose you're ingesting my spirit and what comes out of you it's no longer the stronghold of life it's no longer the law of sin and death but what comes out of you is me it comes out of you as goodness it comes out of you as mercy it comes out of you as favor it comes out of you as blessings over your life they didn't know what's being set up at the table they didn't know they didn't know the meal was our communion <clears throat> the agreement the promise is our deliverance it's our healing it's our forgiveness it's our freedom and I'm here to tell you at the end of this that the sign <laughs> y'all ready I said the sign the sign is the fact that it's about to happen to you tonight I'm going to speak over here because y'all didn't get it. The sign, y'all ready? The sign, it's, it's about to happen to you tonight. I'm going to come over here. The sign is about to happen to you tonight. You waiting for something to crack the sky, but you are the sign. Huh? Your body is the sign. Huh? Your mind is the sign. Huh? Your health is the sign. Huh? Your emotions are the sign. God is about to bring everything in your life back together in Jesus name and the Bible says and it came to pass ah, I'm here to tell you huh, this thing is intentional these things these assignments that were sent to the enemy to destroy you that was sent from the enemy to take you down to take you out to keep you blind to keep you marred to keep you deaf, to keep you where you don't talk to keep you where you don't proclaim the will of God over your life I'm here to tell you God is turning it for your good he's turning it tonight in your favor and it's gonna bring break tonight because it came to pass the bible said we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and i'm here to testify to you by way of heaven that it came to pass i dare you to look at two or three people and just tell them it came to pass it came it came to pass it came to pass it came to pass it might have came to you with agenda to break up your house but i'm here to tell you it came to pass it might came with an agenda to break your mind but I'm here to tell you it came only to pass it came only to go it came only for its direction to leave your life to exit to its next place because it can't stay here because you cannot be broken it can't stay here because you cannot be shattered it can't stay here it can't stay here by the authority of Jesus Christ it must pass
I'm talking to somebody that knows that they've drank the blood. I'm talking to somebody that knows what communion means to you. Somebody that knows where they stand in God. That you can stand with boldness tonight. Proclaim and declare that this thing that I walk in here with, it ain't walking out with me. Because tonight is Passover night. I said tonight is Passover night. I said tonight is Passover night. And it came to pass. Do I have any crazy praisers, any worshipers in the house that can just thank God because it came to pass tonight? It's about to pass over you in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, well, y'all stay on your feet. We about to move into communion, but I got I have something that I need to, I need to, I need to do. Nature, come here. Yeah, so I got some money up here. I got some money up here. And I want to speak to belief systems. I ain't going to make you do nothing crazy. I'm about to hook you up. I'm about to become your favorite pastor in the world. Trust me. Pastors that give money away, they good ones. They good ones. You can trust them. You can trust them. Listen, I got some money here. And this money represents breakthrough. Represents restoration. It represents healing. It represents deliverance. It represents wholeness. And for some of you, you came to God, and your faith was in a place. It just went like this. Whole 20. Boop. Delivered. Healed. Breakthrough. All of that. <laughs> uh-huh. You can go on back to your seat if you can. Uh-huh. <laughs> she said, look, she said like this. She said, oh. I said, yeah, you felt that cloud right there, didn't you? That's a little, little bit of a cloud right there. But, uh, Christian, forgive me. Can you come here? I want to bless you tonight. But for some of you, some of you, you saw her get it right away. 20. And God says, you about to get yours. And you got five. And you were trying to be excited about it. Trying to be happy about it. Yeah, it's coming. And you wake up the next morning and you you're still dealing with some things. That knee still just saying it ain't all the way there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody identifying with me tonight? Yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, I prayed over that addiction. I fasted for it, and it broke. Yep, I'm going to have confidence, but what's the name of that site again? Come on now. Talk about it. Dang on it. It popped up in my search history. Ah. That nah, was just a trip. It was just a trip. And next thing God comes back a couple weeks later, he gives you another, another piece of your deliverance. Now, now you got bold. You deleted your search history. Yeah, you changed your shopping habits. You just stopped shopping at the Weiss that was right next to your favorite ABC store. You, you changed your, your living habits. You, you got a little, but, you, but it's still not all the way. I'm still going to the doctor's. The report ain't all the way clear. I, I thought I forgave him, but every time I see him at that family dinner, I just, I have some triggers that just, some flashbacks of it. It just, I hear these voices that tell me you ain't, you know how bad you messed up? You know what you did? You know how bad you screwed up? You ain't never going to be nothing more than that. Every now and then, I just, it just feels like I just walk into something. Like, brother, like it just smacks me in the face. And then, and then you go back to God and he gives you another. another. And see, at this point, you're almost there. And it's at the point, don't leave yet. It's at the point when you're almost there that you really start getting frustrated. Because you feel something moving, but it won't move all the way. 
you feel something shifting but it doesn't shift all the way and if you're not careful what begins to happen is you begin to curse your delivering process and here's the deal you got to be careful how you curse your deliverance process because your deliverance process is based upon the measure of your faith for some people it was able to happen instantly because they had instant faith but for some of you you had to be built into it and so even though you got it in increments God was still working because he had to build up your faith in the process here's the thing because if he had delivered you all the way you wouldn't have believed it all the way if he had healed you from that cancer all the way and the doctor told you it was gone you would have found another doctor because you wouldn't have believed it all the way so he had to take some of you through a process of faith building so that when you got the full manifestation you had enough capacity to truly believe it so now you come back if you don't curse your deliverance if you don't curse your process you may not see it as fast as the other person but I'm here to tell you don't let it shake your faith God is calling you to dig deeper if you don't see it right away it's because he's saying dig deeper if you don't see it instantly he said come 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 deeper come deeper believe more because full manifestation of 20 is looking for you it may happen instant or it may happen over a process but I'm here to tell you it's looking for you if that's anybody in this house I need you to lift your hands to heaven right now and just say I receive because it's looking for me I receive because it's looking for me you can go back I receive because it's looking for me I receive because it's looking for me uh, my breakthrough is looking for me healing it's looking for me the opportunity to be free is looking for me the opportunity to forgive and release is looking for me and I decree and declare that I will not leave tonight without receiving it all Wow, 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 wow. What a night together and what a revelation. I'm telling you where we stopped in that video was right on the brink of some amazing miracles, signs and wonders that broke forth in that place. We still are getting testimonies even this week of miracles and healings and deliverances and freedom that people experienced last Wednesday. So God is definitely in that revelation and God was definitely with us that night. And for that, we are so thankful. I know for me personally, I will never see communion the same. I'll never see healing the same. I will never see deliverance the same. And I am going to live in the promise. Can I pray for you tonight? I pray for my friend that is watching with us tonight. God, I pray that the promise will come alive in their heart. God, I pray it will come alive in such a way that they would know that the promise is not just for them, but the promise is trying to be active for them in their life right now. The promise is trying to work. I speak prophetically and I release the promises of God in their life. I decree and declare that they would see wholeness. I decree and declare that you would see health. I declare and declare that you would see wellness. You would see well-being. You would receive peace. You would receive joy and that every good thing that the promise of God can bring to your life will manifest in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Well, if you believe that prayer, just put in there, I agree and I believe. And maybe you were watching and you said, you know what, I wanna give my life to the Lord tonight. Maybe you're saying, I need to give my life to the Lord. Or you're saying, I need to come to a space where I just reconnect. I need to reconnect. I know him, but I need to reconnect. Well, text the number that is on the screen. Text the number that is on the screen right now, and someone will directly reach out to you and connect with you and welcome you into the family of faith. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Reach out, and we will reach right back. We are excited for your decision that you have made tonight in Jesus Christ.